everybody. We're going to get started so y'all uh, stand and sing with us. All right. Come on. Come on. Come on. There's a little bit of 
All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good to be with you guys this morning. And uh, good morning to those. Thank you. Yep, I'm on. Uh, Good morning to those that are watching with us on YouTube. Uh, It's good to be with you this morning as well. On the last Sunday of August, September is here. It's hard to believe. Um, So it's good to be with you today. Uh, I want to encourage you to uh, go to our website at this time. And if you haven't already, to um, just click your your attendance here with us so we can uh, just be aware of who's here and keep in touch with everybody. If you're visiting with us, it helps us get to know you better and um, and, and be able to connect you with um, information from the church. So... Um, it's right on our main page. There's a yellow banner with a button that says click me and you literally click that and then it'll take you to a document where you can put your name and, um, and any other information that you want to give us. Um, but uh, if you'll do that for us sometime during worship, that would be awesome. Um, and uh, just you know, to identify myself, I'm Pastor Michelle Straw, the pastor here at Wesley Way, and it's good to be with you this morning. Hope all of you feel welcomed here in this place. Uh, we do have some lovely flowers here on the altar, and those have been given to the glory of God in honor of Kevin's 50th birthday, which is today. Woohoo! <laughs> I heard Kevin say this week that he really didn't want the church to know how old he was, and I was like, yeah, we're going to blow that out of the water, sorry. <laughs> so um, that's, a, that's a big deal, uh, and my mom is always thankful every year. She's like, I made it another year, so uh, whatever number of the birthday, uh, you've got a lot of, of life there, and so we celebrate with you today, which, we're gonna, which brings us to another part in our service this morning. Um, Kevin, you can, you, you'll, be, you'll be part of this in 10, 1030, but if Jana will come forward, and uh, if Chris, if you'll, if you'll come over here, um, Jana had a 30th birthday yesterday. Jana works in our nursery and here in our preschool. So let's celebrate Jana's birthday. And you can, yeah. And um, and then uh, we missed Chris in the midst of pandemic. He had a birthday back in May, but he also turns 50 this year. And so we celebrate him too. Yeah. So Steve, Steve has um, just a gift for you guys from us, from the church. Uh, just to celebrate these as like kind of monumental birthdays, you know, and so we really appreciate the service you give to the church and um, all that you do for us. So happy birthday, guys. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, we give thanks. We have we have excellent staff here and we're just we celebrate with them today. Well, let's have a word of prayer as we begin our worship this morning. Oh God, you are good, good, good. You are good to us. You are loving, you are kind, you are faithful. Um, Lord, as we enter into worship this morning, um, may we be reminded of your presence here with us. And your presence there with us at home, anywhere that we should find ourselves, you are there. You never leave us, you never forsake us. You are good. So, Lord, that you would bless us and move in our worship this morning. Draw us closer into fellowship with you. Show us yourself this day. And may we be um, just compelled in worship and in faithfulness to you because of who you are. We ask it in your name. Amen. All right, our our scripture memory verse, as we uh, press along with that, I'm just curious, it's only week two. Am I doing that right? That's right. That's the next thing, yeah? Okay. (laughs) I was like, "Uh uh-oh, I've missed it up again. Um, Anybody already got it memorized, perhaps? I mean, it's only, you know, we haven't had it very long, but I just thought I'd ask because I'm hopeful. Not quite yet. Okay, that's all right. That's all right. Um, So we have this up on the screen here for you from the the book of Psalms. Um, Just, again, reminding ourselves that God is working amongst us. And sometimes between what we see on the news and what we hear from conversations with one another, we wondered, like, where is God in the midst of all this? And the psalmist here is like, I believe... I'm going to see the goodness of the Lord now in the land of the living. Um, not, not just looking to when I'll be with God in eternity and see him there, but here and now, God is, is working and moving. So let's, let's work through this together. We'll read the, the reference, the verse, and then the reference again. And we'll just do it once through today. Psalm 27, 13 through 14. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord, be strong, and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. Psalm 27, 13 through 14. And I do have a little tune I've, I've worked up for that that I will introduce to you guys next week. Um, but that, that will hopefully help us with memorization. So, Okay, I'll turn it back over to... The offering. Okay, we're going to do the offering now. So we have an offering box here in the back of the sanctuary to kind of uh, try to minimize our contact. But in this service, it was kind of our custom to come and bring our gift anyway. So if you have your gift and you haven't already brought it and want to do so during this song now, you can can do that in the boxes there in the back. 
Um, and you also continue, can continue to give online um, through our website and through Vanco um, services. You can also mail your checks in. If you do mail a check, please mail it to our P.O. box. We have a, um, a, a physical mailbox out here, but we really don't receive much mail there at all, and it's not a secure way to send your gift. So uh, if you'll send it to our P.O. box, and that address is on our website, um, P.O. Box 2890, McJohnna, Georgia, 30253, and, um, and we can receive your gift that way as well. And so here's the numbers so much so far for the month of August. So right now at 35,465. And so our budget needs every month is 46,000. Um, but uh, usually uh, we, we are able to, to press on here. So I just continue to encourage you in the ways you give and thank you for the ways you've been giving in the midst of um, just a difficult season in our lives and in, and in our country. So let's, let's give thanks to God and have a prayer. Uh, Lord, you have given us everything. You've provided for us. Uh, in times where there was much and in times where it was lean and there was little. Um, Lord, uh, you continue to watch over us and to um, give us the things that we need. So, Lord, uh, we give this gift to you now, our tithes, our offerings. Uh, may it be pleasing in your sight, and may you use it for your kingdom. In Christ's name, amen. <laughs> to a time to consider uh, and share our joys and concerns together this morning. Things do you have that we can lift up in our prayers? Yeah, Tabitha?
Okay, yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, so prayers for Wayne Hunsucker as he has another scheduled lobectomy tomorrow. Um, and prayers for that to, to move forward so they can get begin getting some answers and know about uh, where to go with cancer treatment and so forth. Okay, great. Linda. Okay. Okay. So we're still waiting to find out what's going on there. Okay. So prayers for Linda Davis. Um, she's had a ultrasound and then now we'll have a biopsy on her thyroid um, this week. So we pray for for good news there and for healing there with, with what's not working right. Okay. Um, keep uh, some other folks in our church in your prayers. Uh, keep uh, Jean's son Bruce Bouts in your prayers. Bruce fell uh, like a week ago and, and has been having problems with his leg and with mobility since then. Um, and so they're going to have an MRI done tomorrow. Like he don't, I don't believe he has anything broken, but the, his, his, he's, he's getting where his mobility is, is decreasing. And so they're trying to figure out what's going on with that. Um, so prayers for, for Bruce. Um, I'm sure there's some anxiety there with all of that. And he's aware of it and, and um, asks about it a lot with Jean and prayers for Jean too as they try to sort that out. Um, keep uh, Brenda Craig's sister in your prayers, Yvonne Chumbly, who is uh, being diagnosed with a, a particular form of lymphoma and, and they are um, going through testing and so forth to see about what um, what kind of treatment she'll need for that. It's, it's not curable, so it's something they can put in, that can go to remission or, or can be kind of held at bay, but um, she'll have to, to battle with that um, the rest of her days. So if you'll be in prayers for Yvonne Chumbly. And then these were some names that were listed up on, on Facebook from our church members as well. Prayers for Andy Hogue, for Dennis and Bev Kramer, for April, and for Laura Ferguson. Um, so let's be in prayers for those folks. Anything else this morning? Just the fire and the devastation and the fluids are all around. Us. Yes. Yes, thank you. Um, yeah, I didn't make a note, but I wanted to ask, you know, for us to pray for Louisiana, the folks in Louisiana and Texas that were impacted by the hurricane. And, um, yeah, there's fires going on. And, right, right. Yeah, stuff going on all over the world. Um, um, and there are ways that, you know, through, let's certainly be in prayer if you wanted to try to do something financially to help with some of these situations. The Methodist Church has an organization called UMCOR, U-M-C-O-R. Uh, it's United Methodist Committee on Relief, and um, they, they are some of the first responders in big disasters like that in, in a lot of the ways that the Red Cross is. However, the beauty of, of what happens because we're a connectional system in the Methodist Church that um, if I'm not mistaken, I could be speaking out of turn here, but I think this is correct, that our, part of our apportionments go to help support the staff and the overhead kind of things of UMCOR so that when you give your gift uh, to UMCOR in these kind of situations, 100% of that goes to the relief work. Now, I know that part is, I'm not sure about the, how they receive the rest of the funds. I'm pretty sure it's apportionments. But when you give a gift to UMCOR, 100% of that goes to the need at hand, which is not always true with some other relief organizations. A portion of that can, has to cover their overhead and staffing and things like that. But um, So if you wanted to, to give um, financially, you can write a check um, out to, we don't have a way you can do it online on our website yet, um, but you could give to a check to the church and put UMCOR or disaster relief on the item line and then it'll go to them and they'll use that in all these various places where UMCOR is serving. And they really are all around the world. Um, so that's a great way that you can um, help out. You could go, I'm pretty sure you could go to the UMCOR website too. You could just UMCOR.org and you could donate there too with credit card and things like that if that's something you were interested in. Other things this morning. Yeah, Beth. Yes. Right. In Vegas, is that what you said? Okay. Um, continue prayers for her sister-in-law. That's in Vegas. And prayers for, uh, we, we celebrate with Susie Grant as she's coming to the end of her chemo treatment for breast cancer. Continue prayers for her as she begins radiation. Um, and then for others in our church that are battling with cancer too. Uh, Mike Vining, Pat Speaks, um, uh, Mac Baldwin. Be in prayers for those folks. Yeah. Mm, wow. 
And who said the name again? Doug Thompson. Doug Thompson. Okay. Prayers for Doug Thompson having eye surgery this week. Okay. Great. Anything up here in the choir, in the band? All right. What are you celebrating today? We got we got a lot of birthdays we're celebrating, but what are you celebrating today? Let's get some joy going on. Yeah. Yes, yes, even being encouraged to be in here. You know, I didn't, I didn't piece that together when I saw you. I was just like, oh, cool, good to see Sherry and Mark here today. But that's right. I remember Sherry's been extra cautious, uh, or not extra cautious, but the caution that she felt she needed to apply um, with mask wearing and all that. So, yeah, awesome to see you here today. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Beth. Grandchildren. Grandchildren. Amen. I, I hear they're great. And I was one. I am one, so I know it's true. They're great. <laughs> they're great. <laughs> yeah, we celebrate uh, grandchildren. Yeah, what else? Yeah, Steve. Uh, my neighbor had someone else come over and cut grass. Oh. No. <laughs> someone came over and cut Steve's neighbor's grass. Yeah, so he didn't have to do it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So much to give thanks for. Yeah, Sherry. My oldest nephew got married last weekend. Yay. Yes. Oh, yay. We were having a marriage. marriage and honeymoons. Nice. Yay. We celebrate with them. Great. There's so much joy all around us. Um, don't forget to look for it. It's very easy to get overwhelmed. Uh, let us look for the joy because God is working amongst us. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Oh, God, we uh, take a moment now to just uh, be quiet before you, or at least quiet as a corporate group, but speaking to you in our hearts. Uh, hear us, Lord, as we lift up our prayers to you this day. God, when all things are good in our lives, you are still in control, and you are good, and you are loving. And when things seem out of balance and about to just um, fall apart, you are still good, and you are still in control. Uh, truly blessed be your name, O God, because you are God and God alone, the Almighty One, the everlasting God, the one who was and is and is to come, the one who came and, and became one of us, and gave his life on our behalf. The one who returned to heaven and sent his spirit, who lives within us, dwells amongst us, uh, stirring us, encouraging us, empowering us. God, you are great and you are mighty. So as we've called out these names today, God, may we have confidence knowing you are moving in these situations because these people are precious and dear to you, even more so than they are to us which is sometimes hard to imagine because we have um, great love for these ones that we've called out today. Uh, God, that you would move in incredible and mighty ways, miraculous, incredible, impossible-looking ways in all of these lives. All these situations, all throughout our country, throughout our world, uh, God, we cry out for mercy. God, where there is a need for relief, where there is a need for joy, help us to be the ones to bring it. Uh, may we not be so um, consumed with what seems impossible that we forget that you are a God who can, a God who can do what's impossible. Help us, Lord, to come to your aid, to be servants, to be your hands and your feet in all of these situations, um, to be the ones that would speak Christ in the situations where there is illness, where there is cancer, where there has been a hurricane, where there is a fire, where there um, has been a shooting, and, and just all the different things that take place. May we be the ones who speak your presence there and bring love and joy and peace. God, won't you move amongst us and uh, draw us closer to you. Help us, God, not to be the same when we leave today. That, that you would do something incredible amongst us here and now. Forgive us because sometimes we come to worship just out of, uh, out of uh, going through the motions and, or, or um, you know, having a responsibility to be here. Uh, but Lord, uh, this is a time where we meet with you. A time when we have come together corporately to meet with you. So God, we, we seek transformation and change this day. Uh, move in us, oh God. Draw us closer to you. 
where we ask these things in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, we pray. And we pray as you've taught us, O God, and we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Thank you. Our scripture this morning this morning comes from the book of Exodus, chapter 3, verses 1 through 15. Exodus, the second book of the Old Testament. Chapter 3, so we're talking about Moses and uh, his experience with God with the burning, burning bush. Exodus chapter 3, 1 through 15. It says, Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked and the, bu- the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. And when the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here I am. Then he said, Come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said, Further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me, I have also seen how the Egyptians oppressed them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He said, I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, If I come to the Israelites and say to him, The God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? And God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Thus shall you say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is my title for all generations. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your word that you have given to us, that we could know who you are and who we are as your people. Uh, We ask that you might reveal your word to us, God, any time we should encounter it. Make it clear to us. Help us to know how to follow it in faithfulness. Um, May it be something we delight in and not something that's a burden. We ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Um, You might be able to think back to when you were a child and um, you played follow the leader with a friend. I I tried to think about that. I tried to think of a time, a situation, a circumstance, and I couldn't remember a single moment as a child playing follow the leader, though I'm very certain that we did. You know, very simple kind of game that children play. Someone is selected as the leader, and off you go in a little beeline with one another, usually two or more people, sometimes a whole parade's worth of children, following the leader up and down the slide, around the tree, uh, down the path, and, and so forth, and then you take turns and someone else goes. I can kind of remember doing this, though, with my niece and playing follow the leader with her, and, and there's something about being that person. I'm the leader now and you have to do what I'm doing and, it, and it's a fun thing that, that children will play something I can connect maybe more with now as an adult that many of you now who are driving could connect with is following in traffic and following after whoever's in front of you may not necessarily be going to the same place but you're still going in the same direction right and if someone stops and hits their brakes how that ricochets down and and not ricochet but you know there's this uh sequence of everyone else hopefully hopefully everyone else doing the same hitting their brakes and sometimes you'll see a car that'll go over to the opposite side of the road and you're like why are we on the opposite side of the road what's happening and as you get closer you realize oh there's a box or a chair or some kind of obstruction in the road and so you go around as well and so everybody does this beeline around whatever's in the road and you're in an essence following the leader You know, as we get older, um, we're no longer children playing a little child's game. We still are following leaders and following after the example of someone else. And sometimes those are people in our family. 
Uh, sometimes they're coaches or church leaders. Um, sometimes they're uh, people who are in uh, the media and the culture, uh, whether it's uh, someone who's a, a movie star or a, a famous sports athlete or a politician or something like that. that we we um, take note of those around us and, and pick up things from how they are living life and adapt them for ourselves. I, I think a lot of who I am is because of the way my parents raised me. There are things that, are, that I've picked up from other leaders that have spoken to my life, but um, I think a lot of it came from watching my parents live. My brother and I both now as adults go, why do we do this thing? And then we watch our parents and we go, they're doing this thing. And even if it's something like my brother, the things that he carries in his pockets on a daily basis match almost point for point the things my dad carries in his pockets on a daily basis. He learned it by watching my dad. Um, there were some things that our parents sat us down and said, do thus and so, or don't do thus and so. And then there were other things that they never instructed us on at all, but we watched them and picked up on those things from them and went, oh, that's, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that thing because I see mom and dad doing that thing and that looks like a good thing to do. All of us are following after some kind of leader in our lives, following after someone else and, uh, and their goals and their dreams sometimes become our goals and dreams and sometimes people, parents and other people kind of speak those things into us, things they'd like us to achieve or aspire to and, um, and sometimes those become our ideals and so forth. Last week we talked about how our lives are a living sacrifice, right? Romans 12, 1 and 2 about how um, God has called us to uh, not just uh, present um, sacrifices of things that we give up and surrender to God, but that our whole lives would be something we would yield and surrender to God. With all that I have and all that I am, I honor you, O oh God, and I give this thing to you in a way that a husband and wife exchange vows of, of commitment to one another. And then and as we went on that passage, um, Paul talks to us about how we are to not be conformed by the world, to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. So today as we're talking about following, so following the leader, ultimately we're looking at how we follow after Christ and how he is a leader in our lives. How are we following after the plan that God has for us, which sometimes matches up what other leaders are speaking into our lives, but often is very counter to what the rest of the world would teach or guide us in. And, and so how are we following after that? Who are the people that are influencing you? Even if you're an adult, we're still influenced by all kinds of people, and we read and follow people on social media, and we read books, and we, uh, we talk with individuals, and there are people who are influencing us. How is God influencing us? How are we following our leader who is Christ in the way we live our lives? The scripture this morning from the book of Exodus, this is a, a passage that is um, personal to me because I connect and can relate somewhat with Moses's calling. And when I felt God calling me to ministry, I, as I began to read and, and see other people who God called throughout scripture, Moses was one I went, that's a story I can connect with. Not because God revealed himself to me in this kind of um, incredible way like the burning bush that Moses experiences, but because of Moses's own hesitancy and reluctance to... Uh, feel confident in what God's calling him to do. In fact, as you read through this account in chapter 3, uh, time and time Moses goes, yes, but uh, but this, uh, but that, are you sure? Maybe not. And, and he uh, doesn't, uh, you know, when God speaks from him, to him from this burning bush, he doesn't immediately go, oh, yes, of course, I'd love to do that. I'm glad you asked me. Let's get about that right now. Uh, Moses' response is like, um, are, you, are you sure? I mean, like, who am I? I'm nobody. Are you sure you want to call me? I'm like, I haven't even been with the Israelites, and now I'm out in this wilderness. I'm being a shepherd, and I kind of like being a shepherd, and uh, I'm getting along with my father-in-law, so that's pretty cool, and I've got a beautiful wife, and I, I don't, I'm just, you know, this is good. I don't really need to do that. That sounds like a really big deal. I'm not sure when I do that. Uh, that's kind of the way Moses goes about it. He's like, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring out the Israelites? And God's response is, I will be with you, and I will teach you what to say, and I'm going to guide you in the midst of all this. Moses goes, well, well, I mean, your people are going to ask me what your name is if I even know you, and I don't even know your name. What am I supposed to tell them? And he's like, okay, my name is Yahweh, I, which Yahweh translates to the all-existing one. I am who I am, the one who always has been. And, and he, he's, I'm the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. Your people will know that. 
And, and they're, well, you know, um, are you, I mean, what if they don't believe me? They don't believe that you have sent me. And you, God's like, okay, so then I'm going to give you these signs and wonders. And, and so he gives him a sign to do with his staff. And he takes him, uh, lets him put his arm inside his cloak and he pulls it out and it's leprous. And he puts it back in his cloak and he pulls it out and it's clean and whole again. And Moses is still like, well, well I'm not really sure. I mean, I, I, I'm not very eloquent. I can't speak really well. And he's, here I feel like God's exasperation kind of reaches its limit where he's like, who gave you your mouth? Who makes the mute speak or the deaf hear or the blind see? And he's like, I, I'm the almighty God. I can take care of any excuses you have, any, any, any concerns you have about your ability to lead. I've got that. And I could, I could relate and connect with that. It, when God called me to seminary, I, I called me to be a pastor, I... I wasn't, uh, you know, some people learn that early on when they're young and they feel God calling them in their youth or as a child even sometimes to that sort of calling. And that was just not my case at all. I, I went to school without a major. I was undeclared uh, freshman year. I had to pick something my second year and I, I chose biology, but I quickly learned that I was not cut out for biology because biology is hard. Um, and, I, and I love nature and all that. And that's kind of one of the reasons why I chose that. But just the basic classes, I was really having to work hard to uh, do well not totally fail the classes. And I was like, this is beginning level. It's only going to get harder from here. Maybe this is not the thing I need to do (laughs) with my life. And, uh, and, but in the midst of that, God was beginning to speak into my life that he was calling me to ministry. And it was repetitive because I didn't get it the first time. Uh, My brother spoke to me and said, you know, maybe God's calling you to ministry. And I was like, Actually, he said seminary. God's calling you to, maybe you should go to seminary. And I was like, I'm not going to seminary. Uh, my youth, youth minister at, at college campus uh, said, you know, I think maybe you should think about going to seminary. And I was like, I'm not going to seminary. People, you know, these people that go to seminary, pastors go to seminary. I'm not going to go to seminary. I'm not going to be a pastor. And, um, <laughs> and so I kind of kept, you know, but no, but no, but no, but no, until finally I was like, oh, I think God's calling me to go into ministry. And that was the first understanding. God was calling me into full-time ministry, that that was to be my career path. And, um, and when I yielded to that, oh, such peace. I was so, so thankful for that. I was like, finally, I had, I had relief because I was really struggling with trying to figure all that out. But I felt like Moses here uh, coming up with excuses uh, and, and reasons why that would not be something I would be called to. But yet God called me to that all the same. Who are we following and who is leading us in our lives? All of us have a purpose and a calling. All of us have something that God is is drawing us to in our lives. And some of us, I believe, I think somebody probably here today is fighting and wrestling with a call into ministry. And maybe not this service, maybe someone watching at home, maybe uh, someone that's going to be in the 1030 service. But I, I, I believe out of our numbers, there's someone there, God's calling to ministry that is just like being hesitant about that and not certain about that and, and trying to look a different way. Um, but God's calling all of us to service in the work of the church, in the work of the world. And how are we following the example of Christ? Here, Moses, he's pushing back, pushing back, pushing back, and finally does what God's asked him to do. And God is there, right there with him. Right there with him. Every excuse, every reason that Moses would say, I can't do it because, I can't do it because, I can't do it because... God says, I've got an answer for that. I got an answer for that. I got an answer for that. I'm going to use you. I will be with you. Almighty God, I'm going to be with you. It's going to be great. You'll be fine. It's going to be good. I've chosen you. I want you to do this thing with me. And Moses finally does. And God does mighty powerful things through Moses because he chose to follow what God was leading him to. How are we following after the example that of Christ himself? How are we following after the path that God is leading us towards? Over in Matthew chapter 16, this is also our lectionary text for the day. Um, In in the gospel of Matthew, here Jesus is starting to tell in verse verse 21 of chapter 16, tell the disciples about his death and what's all about to happen with that. And Peter is like, this is horrible. I don't want this to happen. I think this is a bad idea and this should, God forbid that this should happen at all. But Jesus, knowing this is the path that must happen, rebukes Peter and says, get behind me, Satan. He calls him Satan uh, because he's a stumbling block to him. He's like, this is what I need to be doing. Your mind is on earthly things, Peter, not on the things of God. 
And then Jesus goes on and tells him, he's like, look, if you want to follow after me, you've got to be willing to give it all up. If you want to follow after me, you've got to deny yourself, pick up your cross, and follow after me. And then he, he gives this paradoxical kind of statement, verse 25. He says, for those who want to save their life will lose it. Those who won't lose their life for my sake will find it. Like, that doesn't make sense, right? If, I'm, if I want to try to preserve my life and, and keep it safe for myself, I'm really, I'm really um, going to lose my life. But if I'm willing to, to give it all over to Christ and surrender fully to him and be transformed and the renew my mind in this pattern after Christ, then I really gain, I gain everything. Because in the ways that we think, well, this is the safe path for me. This is the thing that I think is more pleasurable for my life. This is the better model, I think, for success. Those things are not often, they don't often match up with what God's plan is for us. And so, in essence, we could have gained everything through God. We sacrifice it by pursuing the thing we think is going to benefit us in life, right? How many people that have so much wealth and, and success, maybe as the world would, would call it out to us, that are miserable, miserable. But yet those who have chosen to follow after Christ, how that's joy they find in the midst of sacrifice for him. I went to um, Africa, to Kenya, once on a mission trip, and uh, we worked at a school in, in Meru and helped um, build some, for the, some add on to the facility that was there and do a, a sort of vacation Bible school with the people in the community. And, uh, and I took a trip down to Ecuador once with a, with a church to do missions in Ecuador. And uh, we worked with a small church there in, in a, one of the areas there in, um, gosh, I can't, I'm trying to think of the name of the city that we were in, in Ecuador. And um, both groups, um, by, by American standards, would have hardly anything. So little did they possess. Um, sometimes not even really clean water, but they were so joyful and so happy. Um, to, with what they had. And then we have people here in the United States who, who maybe have great, uh, in comparison, great wealth and yet are taking their lives because they're, they feel like they have no meaning and no purpose in life. And so they, they, they end their own life because they're, they're lacking value and meaning and purpose. Christ says if we will be willing to give our lives for him, we will find life. For what will it profit if we gain the whole world but forfeit life. And what are you going to exchange for your life? How are we following after Christ? How do we follow after the example of him to give everything that we might follow him? Following the leader. He's our leader. If we have said, I am all in Christ, I've chosen you, you are the, the Lord of my life, then, then we follow after him. That's the next step. And it doesn't mean that everyone has to go to seminary and become a pastor. Uh, it, it often means that God is calling us to start a small group or to teach, a, to teach a class, or to volunteer to serve in church, or to go on a mission trip, or to um, begin, you know, every one of us to be sharing faith with someone else. And we go, but I don't, I don't have the skills for that, or I don't know about this, or I'm nervous when I talk to people, or my faith is not strong enough, or I don't know the Bible well enough to tell people about Jesus. But guys, if you have a relationship with Christ, that is all you need. God is with you to supply everything else you need. You have backup. You have so many other Christian peers that when you get hit that wall and they're like, my friend asked me this. I was trying to share my faith with them and they asked me a question I didn't know. You know, people really like it when you're just honest and say, I don't have a good answer for that. I'm going to have to come back to you on that. That's so refreshing to people for, the, for us not to have all the answers. So be encouraged. If you don't have all the answers, well done. Uh, God will show you more and, and teach you and help you as you're sharing with other individuals. You have me as a resource. You have someone who's gone to seminary who has a whole a bunch, too many books, so many books, uh, with lots of information to help you, help me, help us share faith with others and to continue growing in our relationship with Christ and how we witness to one another. Moses is like, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but. But God's like, <laughs> I'm, I'm the almighty God. I'm calling you to this purpose. I have a reason for it, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be with you, right? Do you remember our memory verse from Deuteronomy 31.8, right? The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. 
Who are you following? Who are the people that you admire in life, that you are modeling your life after? Are they Christ followers? And, 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 and even Christ himself, are we following after him in faithfulness? What is it that God is calling you to, that maybe God has been calling you to for a while, and you've kind of, kind of not listened to him? What is it that God is wanting you to do that maybe is a totally new thing or maybe continuing with an old thing but with a new passion and a new excitement for it? Do we even pause long enough to see what God is calling us to? There was that burning bush and Moses was like, what is, what is that? I, that should be totally burning up and it continues to burn and not be consumed. I'm going to go check that out. He could have went... Yeah, that looks like trouble to me. I'm just going to go home to the wife and move on with things. But he doesn't. He's like, that's curious to me. Where is God catching your curiosity to take you to something new? Uh, as, we, as we close out our thoughts today, I want to give you some things to take away today. First, I want you to spend time listening to God. Listening to God. There, too often we are going, I'm trying to listen to God, but I just can't seem to hear him. I don't know why. I can't hear God at all. And we've got our fingers in our ears when God is trying to speak to us. You know, sometimes he speaks in a whisper, in a soft voice. It's not always in a burning bush or, you know, storm cloud kind of thing like we'd like to have. God spoke to me. It kept coming up, kept coming up, kept coming up repetitively. Finally, the person that it finally started to sink in with was an, a, pretty much a stranger that I had met, that I had known for just a, not even a, a couple of hours. I just had had brief interactions with this person over the course of a week on a mission team. And they were like, God is speaking to you. You're just not listening. Are you listening to God? What is God calling you to do with your life? Spend time and just ask, God, is there something you want me to do? What, what can I do for your kingdom, oh God? And see what he might say. Next, make a list of your excuses. Make a list of your excuses. Now, that seems a little weird, but I want you to make the list. And then beside that list, write out how God cannot take care of that. Because if you can complete that list and go, well, these are my reasons I can't do that, uh, we got too many things going on. We're too busy. I don't have the money for it. I don't have the knowledge for it. I don't, um, I'm afraid of the reactions that people will give. I don't think the community's ready for it. Whatever those, list those things out. And then right beside it, how God cannot change that. Because I don't think you can complete that kind of a list. I, re I really don't. Because God can do anything, right? If it, that's, that's the definition of who God is. That he can do anything. So if you can complete that list then I think you're off the hook. If you can go, nope, God cannot do these things, then by all means, put that aside and don't pursue that thing that God's calling you to. But I don't think you'll be able to do that. Make a list of, of what you think that God cannot do and try to fill that out. And then lastly, that you might pray about it. That you might spend time praying for God to change our hearts, change your heart. Um, praying about the thing God is calling you to do. Um, I've been reading this week, uh, helping edit a book that a, a family friend of ours has written about how God called her and, and a group of women that she was in small group with to start a, women, a battered women's a domestic violence uh, facility for women in Griffin, Georgia back in the 80s. And I'm familiar with the story because it's part of my story because my mother is one of these women in this group. But as I've been reading it, I always thought... Sue Palmer is the author of the book and the one who was the director of, of the ministry. I always thought she had great confidence because she's been a spiritual mentor to me all my life. And I have seen her just do these things with God. I'm just like, oh my gosh. Like they smuggled Bibles into China. I think it's probably still okay to say that. I hope that <laughs> I'm like, gosh, that could still be a problem. Uh, and they, they took them in uh, to a foreign place. And, and God was with them and helped them do that. It, could have been a very, it was very dangerous, uh, and it could have gone badly. And they, God called them to do it, and they did it. And so I've seen her do these things through her life and went, she doubted? There was a time in her life where she didn't think that God could do a thing in her life? And it totally was. As I've been reading this book and helping write and edit on the book. And uh, God did incredible things through them and pulled other people into the ministry that they had not even met yet, 
that God had put a burden on their heart for building that would be used, the money that would go to pay for the various things, and, and God brought all these people together. But if that initial group had said, yeah, this is crazy nonsense, and not moved forward with it, then, then none of that might have come about. You know, God is calling us to do something. Pray about it and, and see how God wants you to move forward with it and take courage. He is with you and you can do it. Who are you following in life? What is God calling you to do? How might you follow the lead of our leader to give up our whole lives that we might gain all for the kingdom of God? Let's, let's pray. Oh God, I truly believe that there are people here today who sense you calling them to something. Truly, in fact, God, you are calling each and every one of us to make disciples of Jesus Christ. But even more specifically than that, there are things you are calling us to. Perhaps a new career. Perhaps a calling to full-time ministry. Perhaps starting something within our church or our community or in our families and our homes. It might be as simple as praying with our spouses or reading scripture with our children or just that friend that you know you need to share faith with, having the courage to start that conversation. God, you are calling us to great and mighty things. Help us, God, to follow you. To not have the but this, but that, like Moses, but that we would... We would readily and excitedly say, yes, God, you're calling me to something? You have a purpose for me? Yes, God, I want to do that. So Lord, for wherever we find ourselves today with you, that you would help us to take steps forward in this journey, steps forward in following after you. May we not find comfort and peace until we have followed in faithfulness to you. Lord, we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Know this altar is available and open to you this morning to respond to the, the, the pressing on your heart this day. It may have nothing to do with the sermon today, maybe something else that God wants you to come and pray about. Know this altar is available to you and know that if you're there at home that you can do that right where you are. God is with us. I encourage you to spend time in prayer this morning. Let's stand as we close and sing.
to give you all some announcements as we close out our service this morning. Uh, first, today we do have a youth band meeting today at 515 for those that have already been in the band or may be interested in being part of the band or helping with that. That'll be uh, here today. And then we have a, a parent meeting for the youth today at 530. Um, so if you guys be present for that. Uh, put September 20th on your calendar. We're going to do another outdoor worship service on September 20th. And that'll just be one service at 1030 outside. And then, uh, and then we are going to start back with Wednesday night uh, programming and meals. All the meals will be, uh, be going to be catered locally, and everything will be pre-boxed. So um, it won't be like we'll have a big pan of lasagna that we'll be scooping out to every individual. Everybody will have their own little box, and your whole meal will be inside so that we can um, really you know, cut down uh, things we're passing back and forth. So, And we'll um, sit in small numbers at our tables, preferably with your family groups, um, and then spread out through the the dining room here so um so just check your email for information about that and uh, we'll have reservation slips for you to make your reservation we'll have those next week for you and uh, you can also do it by emailing the church office if you're going to participate in the wednesday night dinners okay don't forget your masks as you're heading out of the sanctuary and as you move around in the building uh, to help us uh, as we're traveling back and forth and we'll receive this benediction so go forth from this place with a holy stirring in your heart that you would be troubled by the message today and compelled to do what God is calling you to do, that he would empower you to go forth and be his servant, that his light would shine in all the earth. Amen. Amen. Amen.